Well, hello there. Today I thought I'd bring you a cake video. Now, to be perfectly honest with you, I made this cake cake way back in February of 2016. Say what now? Have you been there the whole time? Yes. You clearly need supervision. Aren't you going to introduce me? Go ahead. Hi, I'm Andrea's Inner Perfectionist. I'm the reason all these projects look amazing and take forever. Okay, anyway, can I continue? Now that I have all this time on my hands, I can finally edit all the things I recorded earlier. Well, you're ambitious. So yes, this video actually would have been my very first YouTube video. So I guess in a way this is like starting over. I hate it when we have to start over. So let's roll a brand new intro. I started with three six inch vanilla cakes. I leveled them and cut them in half. Now it's time to stack them. I started with my homemade cake board. Now I made this slightly smaller than my actual cake because I knew I was going to need to round the bottom. See this bottom edge? At the halfway mark, I'm going to need to add some dowels for support. I tried to evenly space the three dowels. I added a second cake board, also slightly smaller. Then I added the rest of the layers. Here I'm trying to smooth out the edges and fill the gaps with more buttercream. Now it's time to spear it in the heart. No, just kidding but you will need one more dowel to make sure all the layers don't shift later on. This step is not optional, I agree. Time to start coloring the fondant a gray. I used a small piece and added the black gel food coloring. I'm wearing gloves because this stains your hands really bad. That's just really sticking to the gloves. It's all right, I'll deal with it. It'll get better. Nah, flesh colored skin is her baking noobs. Let's just toss those there. To all those out there thinking baking is not a workout, shame on you. You know it's ready when it looks like a melted down baby elephant. Why would you say that? Now it's time to do some cake acrobatics. This part always scares me. I always see this going so wrong. Cake on the floor, cake on me, cake on the ceiling. The ceiling, really, why not? Then we're going to, oh wait, I'm doing it again. Oh yes, that's right, I have to shape the bottom first, which is clearly the top now. This is so confusing. After the edge has been good and rounded, I'm gonna scare the crap out of it again and flip it one last time. I finally finished the crumb coat. Wait, before I added the next layer of icing, I did put it in my fridge. Helps the crumb coat stay put. With this layer of icing, I wanted to make sure to smooth it out as good as possible. I even tried using this fancy scraper thing. Uh, looks like it didn't work. Those lines are going in a different direction. Don't judge me. I got it done, didn't I? All right, on to shaping the spigot parts. I added Tylos powder to the fondant. It's supposed to help it harden faster. I wanted to use this cutter to get my first shape, but it's just too soft. So the old fashioned way it is. Oh good, you got yourself some reference pictures. I thought you were gonna wing this whole thing. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Why are you here? Just to annoy me? If I'm annoying enough, you'll just do it my way. Okay guys, stop fighting. I'm trying to explain how to make a cake here. Sheesh. I tried to zoom in the best I could because somebody didn't zoom in on the actual camera. Don't look at me. Anyway, I cut a piece of my fondant snake and started shaping it and adding those little lines. I put that one aside, on to the next. We're gonna be here for a while. back. 
smoothing out the icing a little since it's way easier to smooth out when it's a bit firmer. On to some more fondant details. Oh yes, I remember this part. I'm trying to cut out this funny looking starfish piece on top. You should print it out and stencil it. I'll be fine. I got this. I'm using the large cutter to make sure my edges are even. Then I'm marking the inside and trying to mark the arms. And this is what happens when you don't have a level table. Okay, so next one. That one's pretty good. No, I guess it wasn't. Ugh, nope, still not working. Oh look, a stencil. I don't wanna talk about it. Looks pretty good now. I'm just cutting some long strips that will be those rings around the outside. Now just to make sure they're straight and not all wavy. If you spin it fast, you can definitely see if it's straight. Wee, 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 so mature. I rolled out another piece of fondant and cut it to the height of my cake. Now, getting it on the cake was harder than I thought it would be. I had to have a helping hand. Smoothing this was harder than a regular flat cake. I trimmed the edge and tried to push in the fondant around those rings. Now for the top. I cut myself a rough square. The fondant was super soft and gummy, therefore hard to cut. And then smoothing. Lots and lots of smoothing. I added the funny starfish by adding a bit of water to the bottom and sticking it to the top of the cake. Who was in charge of that seam? That's horrible. I'm using a strip of parchment paper and taping it to the outside of my six inch pan. With my leftover gray fondant, I used a pretty large piece and added the Tylos powder. I really need this to harden. This is going to be the top part with the handles in it. I rolled it out and used a ruler to get a straight edge. but I needed to make it longer, so rolling again. Then I had to math and figure out the exact spots for the handles to go. If only such a tool existed. You know, the soft measuring kind. But that's okay, I'll just use this parchment to measure around the pan. I used the ruler to measure it and transfer the marks to the fondant. I'm not gonna say it. And back to cutting a straight edge. Then I found the center and marked where to punch the holes. I trimmed up those handles, then cut off the other side. Wrapping that around the pan, I glued the edges with the clear piping jelly. I could probably have used the water. This stuff was weird. It was the texture of jello after it's been smashed to oblivion. Now time to make that little center circle. I've come to the conclusion that seams are just not my forte. Time to jello glue all those pieces together. I actually should have just melted some white chocolate to stick all this together with. Don't say anything. I'm not. But for now, the jello and toothpicks seem to be working. adding the little ring to the top now. Wow, that autofocus is horrible, but it sure makes for a good dance beat. Really? Can you just grow up already? Alcohol time! No, not for drinking. We're not here to decorate drunk, but that would be fun though. Oh, that's 
that's cute. You think half a container will be enough? Ha. Realizing my other half is right, I'm adding the rest. Mixing that and painting. Yeah, it's still kind of thin. Clearly two coats are going to be a must. Now I'm redenting those lines around. Good thing the fondant wasn't totally hardened yet. Adding another container of silver. Pretty sure if I had one more, I would have dumped that in there too. That looks a bit better. Let's speed that up. Also painting that handle part, but make sure it's dry first. Pretty sure I did this the next morning. Second coat time. Much better, but still not great. Now it's finally time to make it look like it's supposed to. Using more of that piping jelly. Really though, that chocolate probably would have worked so much better and filled some gaps. Giving it one last coat of silver. Still a little streaky, but at this point I was running out of time to repaint with enough drying time. I added the spigot with a large skewer. It was really heavy though. I did use a tiny bit of melted white chocolate later to keep it in place. I didn't get that filmed because I was really hoping the skewer would hold everything together and this was a last minute fix. All right, that's it. I think it turned out really good. Not bad for one of my first 3D cakes. Really, now you're leaving? I want to give a shout out to Jenna and Kayla for giving me the opportunity to create this amazing cake cake. If you want to see more amazing creations, hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!